Assalamu alaikum viewers. You are welcome to our this week's edition of our popular program Guest Podium, reaching you from Salam African TV, London. My name is Ibrahim Isiak Daoudou. Our guest today is Alahaja Sharifat Muhammad Kamal. Alahaja is the proprietress of uh, Alahaja is a spe specialist pharmacist family and children at proprietors of a Muslim Muslim Academy London United Kingdom and also founder and first Amira of Federation of Muslim Women Association from one in United Kingdom here. Alaja you are welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? Uh -huh. Alaja we want you to please can be give us a little bit information about uh, this establishment that is um, the Muslim uh, and the former. What really motivated you for this establishment? Um, God, I was very loving and she told me to change. I was um, um, The Federation of Muslim Women Association in the UK, it was formed as um, a, an, a view of our women in UK needing um, a platform so that they can enjoy the freedom of Dawa exclusively for women in a way that we can arrange programs that fit the families, we can arrange programs that fit the women, and we can arrange programs that will support the whole community in terms of the movement, coming through the women approach. Um, it was after the formulation of Form 1 UK that we started um, thinking about the academy. Because we realize that most of our women does not have enough knowledge of the Quran, the Hadith, and the Sunnah. So we tried to start with one or two students over two, three years ago, and most of them have already completed the Quran. So a couple of months back, we just started to expand the academy, and we started um, it as a full loan. And this, this includes, um, we teach um, women adults and their children, Quran and Adit, and there's classes for memorization and Tajweed. And we have another class that we teach Fikyu. And most of these courses are online. Why it is online is because we want it to fit with our women's need. So sometimes when some of us are at work or we wanted to take care of the house or the time when the woman will be at home to be able to learn as much as we can. And that was um, how okay. Um, I look at this academy. It seems it's a gender base. It's like actually you've uh, put in place all what will uh, basically benefit the women folk. But what about the boys? Why is there any planning that maybe their own is coming because as a mother? I believe that um, the young boys are the boys could have been put into consideration as well. Yes, because um, we, um, whatever we do, we have to follow the Adit, um, the Quran and the Adit. And as much as possible, we have to stick to the Sunnah. Um, because most of our adult boys, there's limitation to how our female can take them. So until we have a plan for the boys, and until we are able to get enough brothers, tutors, they are ready to carry them along. If we don't have it, then our sisters might take over. But there's a plan that we're trying to introduce for our teenage boys. And at the same time, we want to include mentoring and coaching because we are realized that our boys from our own origin does not have enough mentoring from our brothers. And because of the, because of the way the community is set up, the work schedule of our brothers is tight and the way they work is so tight. And so we wanted to match a way whereby we can work together with them and bring up these boys and they can be role models as the way our brothers are. Okay, thank you very much. What, uh... Now we are going to the main um, subject. Our topic this week is uh, what is the reason behind the collapse of marriages, especially in the diaspora? It's a very common phenomenon whereby you see couples breaking up, home breaking up. Recently in January, I think I remember January to be precise, there are a number of killings of young boys, especially of the black ethnic minority and majority of the victims they came from the parent uh, the word let me use the word of the media broken now let us look at the 
institution called marriage. What is marriage? And is marriage compulsory? Um, if we look at the basic phenomenon of what is happening within the society, it's because we are separating home from, the, from where we are. But the Quran and Sunnah is just the same. And the problem we have is because we are not sticking to that part of Islam that brings both couples together. So the, the husband has gone astray, the wife has gone astray. I'm not saying people, we are perfect. But at the same time, most of the um, admiration that should be coming through both of them, the society are not even helping out at the same time. Okay. So we, uh, we find ourselves in a situation whereby the people that are together that are supposed to be supported by the society are not being supported. And because of the influence of society on them, they cannot even really support themselves. So from your question that we should define marriage, mm -hmm. according to Islam, it's a legal binding between the husband and the wife, which is witnessed by witnesses and Allah. And that's the basis of nikah. And for every nikah, there's always a talim and a lecture that simplify the responsibility of husband and wife. And most of these breakages that we're seeing is because this contract is being broken. And when we look into Surat and Nisa, the first thing Allah said in the back in Surat and Nisa is, is for us to appreciate what Allah has done between two people, bringing Adam and Eve together, and bringing us as man as woman together. And when we go back into Surah to room, Allah to start when Allah said he has put love and mercy in between what the time what happened time, in between husband and wife. Yeah, that was also the things that really bring husband and wife together. And if those ones are lacking, if we can appreciate why we're together, and the love in between the husband and wife are not strong enough. And at the same time, the last thing when we go into when we go down into Surah to Nisar, are the Jalil and Anisa. When Allah has bring husband and wife together, he has made someone a manager. We know that whatever we do in life, even here as a company, here you have a manager. As a home, you, uh, there should be a head. So Allah has made the ma, the head of the home. Whichever circumstances it is. Either it's good enough, it's not good enough, it's rich enough, it's not. The husband is head of the house. And it's because that head of the house is not being accepted by some families within the homes, then there's a lot of issues. And that's why some of this issue. So we go back to the definition of marriage and the causes. You can see that it's just the contract is getting being broken by what brings them together in the first instance. So it's not as if we are perfect or anybody is perfect. We're just saying that whatever we can do to support this union is what everybody has to work to us. <laughs> now let us look at it this way. There is a common belief that majority of both men and women are not ready for marriage. This is one of the reasons why people believe that maybe marriages, some even said, because reading means to write, you see some people who believe that if they are not, marriage is not for them. Then what is the reason? I want to look at the area, I want you to try to shed more light. As Allah was born, and a marriage for couple. Uh, marriage is just a relationship between two people. Marriage is not for me. And if anybody has done it, has completed as of their faith, and we should walk towards the other part of the faith. So getting married itself is, an, is a way towards our ibadah, towards Jannah. So we have to encourage people, as we encourage people to pray, no more fasting. Or we encourage our mature children or adults to get married. And why people are afraid of marriage? It's because of all these circumstances, issues I'm talking about. And the problem for them not to get married it's the same, it's worse than them to get married. Because Allah said in the Holy Quran, a man, we can't expect a mature man to continue to live without a wife. He will fall into all those circumstances, things that Allah said we should not do. Which is where marriage itself prevents the man and the woman from being, from, from raising themselves or committing zina or adultery. So, as much as possible, we fall to this fact that in Islam, it is a similar work, a similar that is compulsory, that a man should marry and a woman should marry. No, Alhamdulillah. Looking at it, because I want to look at this from this angle. For instance, it's like back home in Africa, the system of way of living in Africa is quite different from the way of living of uh, 
people, especially in Europe, America, Australia, and every part of the world, which that we believe is diaspora. In Africa, although of recent, there's some kind of a crisis whereby people hear such a thing, but it's very common. What I'm saying is that it's our people adopting the style of the Western world, or what is the main reason behind it? Um, I think uh, it's um, I rather be positive about the situation. And uh, we can move into an area whereby do we not say that our people, we will say the cause. Why the cause of these issues? For example, when we say it's not because they are in Western world, or it's because they are not adapting to where they are coming from. It is the environmental effect that is affecting everybody. For example, a man needs to leave, her, leave home in the morning to go to work. The wife has to work. Even after work, they don't have enough resources to support the family. The money is not enough. They don't have time for themselves. The children, they don't have enough time to take care of themselves. And it's not, even, it's not the cause of the husband. It's not the cause of the wife. It's just that there's not enough support. And that is why it is advisable after some um, counseling lectures and supporting me. Husband and I have asked to continue to review each other. They have to continue to continue to talk. They have to continue to admonish each other and they have to pray together. All the community effort works everywhere that we go. We have to go together. We have to pray together. Because one thing that we have to realize is even from onset, they come from different backgrounds. They come from different villages. They come from different fathers and mothers. So they still learning to live, live, live together as couple. Then they're coming in a society where they don't even have enough to support themselves. So they will be angry. They are not happy. And within the community, they may not even have enough to say, okay, maybe someone has, this person has a car, or my husband doesn't have a car. Or this lady in the mocks, maybe we do a lot of celebration, women, she, one can buy a cloth, the other one cannot afford it, because her husband is it's not any enough. So all those things are societal influences that cause all those things. So I would not say it's them coming to the Western world. I would say the environment is not supporting, it's not supporting enough the nucleus of and I think as much as possible, as I said, husband and wife has to continue to come together to review their relationship and solve issues that need to be shown, that need that needs to be solved. And most importantly, we have to be. Look at that, this issue, because as I said, it's you know, something common that we I mean, we hear about it a number of occasions. Now, the children, you've been a specialist in the area of the family and children. And looking at it, I believe that children are the one that affected most in this issue. Is there any way that this kind of things could be stopped? Or perhaps, uh, I'm sure before. I think, well, from my own opinion, because we, all of us, we are learning and we are human beings and we are, we are, we are according to Quran, we we normally forget things and we're not perfect. Everybody will continue to make perfect ourselves perfect every day. So when we look and think to the children, everything still comes from the parents. And we all continue to have mercy on all of us. So nobody is perfect and nobody can do it well. And we can say we cannot be wronged. Or we can say you I am the best person to be in this position. I'm just it's just like I'm just looking to be person in the pool. And that person can come and make it better. And that's the way life is. So we have to look in a situation whereby how do we support a couple in crisis, which we don't have at the moment in our system? How do we realize there's a problem going within our school? And why? How do, how do our imams, our Muslim leaders, our brothers support a home that have crisis? For example, the husband cannot afford to pay the rent. He can't afford to buy food for his wife. They can't afford to pay for the children, and the wife is very, very tortured. So if anything happened in that relationship, whose fault is it? Is it the wife's or the husband? So they found a certain situation whereby they might not be able to cope. And unfortunately, the society will not see the problem, and they might not be able to solve the problem, and they might hurt it. So, I mean, so the best thing we can do to support children is to support the parents to be able to support their children. We support them spiritually by encouraging them to live 
shihid, subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala sallam wa shihid. By supporting them, by knowing exactly that this person in my community, and if I, this, this person, I believe this thing, I can have this particular person. This is my brother, I know him every day, he comes with his car, and I didn't see him in the car anymore. I should be able to ask him, my brother, I went to your car. I see this couple together with uh, his husband and his wife. I didn't see the wife with him anymore. I'm ready to have Where is the wife? So all those things, we have to find out a way of getting to know when people have problems and how we can support as a community, as friends, as families. And when we bring the couple together, then we'll be able to support the children. But we can, those children, when we look at the children that are baby, are circumstantial and they're out of the home now, and they need help. Then yeah, it's a community issue. We still have to come to support. But the basic still remains the fact that we have to stay with her. We have to use the words of the Quran that bring us together to rule our life, to control our, our life, and continue to evaluate, 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 and see how we're doing. Are we doing better? Are we doing worse? How can we make ourselves better? How can we make our community better? How can we make our friends better? Because uh, as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, the brotherhood uh, is like a whole person. If one part of it is not well, the whole body is not well. So we're a community of one single soul. We should be able to support as much as we need. We either make it easy for others. Allah uh, Mahmoud. I've been saying that um, in the beginning of the program, while I'm making the introduction, I do mention about the recent killing of uh, Young, uh, young uh, blacks of ethnic minority, and the majority of them, I believe, they are from Nigeria. And is there any measure that organizations, Muslim organizations, could adopt that could eradicate the breaking homes? Especially because people believe that the factor that led to this is that majority of these children that the um, majority of these uh, victims, these children, many of them, as I said, they around, came from a broken home as a word they used. And their, I mean, their mother were unable to undo or control them. Is there any lecture or perhaps that the, the organization like Form One or any other women organization can put in place to talk to women for them to know that, okay, um, we are these lapses of course, the children are always the victims. Um, I mean, I would, I would say the final seminar in a situation they didn't create for themselves. And I will not, and at the same time, I will not say it is a fault of the parents, as I said earlier on. It's just the fact that everybody found themselves in a situation they didn't want. Because there's nobody that would be happy to be, to be from a broken home. And no woman will be happy to be divorced. No husband will be happy to divorce his wife. And no children are happy to have a broken home. So I would say that they are the good one. We from One UK, we normally that's one of the reasons why we have our marriage and family life conferences once a year. We try to use look into go into the community and look at what is wrong within the community and look at interventions to make them better. And we look at speakers within our new moms or our lecturers to come once a year. But what we're finding out after, after our conferences is that we, we need to do more. So we realize that we have to get a focus group. Maybe in every mock, every mock, there should be a marriage counselor. The mom has to be a marriage counselor. There should be someone people need to speak to. I am a mentor. I mentor husband and wife. I coach husband and wife. Sometimes I speak to a husband and wife yeah, for more than two years on the same issue. He'll be going front and back and front and back and front and back. Sometimes it is the wife's fault. Sometimes it is the brother's fault. Sometimes it is the community that is influencing the marriage themselves. Notwithstanding, we realize in marriage we have the husband and the wife. We have the friends of the wife, we have the friends of the husband, we have the in-laws at the same time, we have the community, and we have the outside world, I mean the work area. Stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to? Everybody goes to their offices. Wherever you meet in your offices, your husband may not know. Wherever the wife doesn't know. Who you talk to, your husband may not know. In the mocks, sometimes the people we, mock, we go to, it's their different opinions. So people learn and pick. The husband go out this way, we learn and pick. The wife learn and pick. And they come together, and they, start, they come together into the house, and they try to think, 
maybe this is what I've seen today is an idea for this particular person. So at the same time, I will just go back to the same fact that every mass, every community have to put in place something to check if the family unit of every individual family members in the mocks or in the community have issues or if how to support families that are in need because we realize great poverty level normally affect most of these things if a husband the way Allah has created a man even an eight, my eight year old boy at home is a man he will tell him mommy his sister's problem i am not going so it's, a man has to be a man. You have to support a man to be able to be a man. If a man cannot feed his wife, he cannot pay for rent, then there's a problem. That man has to be supported because there's no way he can be happy. So the community has to stay firm and support a family unit as much as we can. If you can support a man to support the wife, the children will be fine. So may Allah make it easy for all of us. None of us is perfect, but at the same time, we have to work together to make this community a peaceful one. Alhamdulillah. Uh, at this point, we would like to go back to our commercial department where they will uh, hear the advert of our sponsor, that is Zunorain Aj and Umrah Services. Special thanks to Dr. Mohammed Akiwobi Utman. And when we come back, we will continue precisely where we stop. Salam. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Right, alaikum. Alaikum, uh, before we have the, our commercial break, there is a particular area where you mentioned that, for instance, a man who is uh, in distress, if I should use the word, maybe financially, perhaps, um, other related issue, and most of his, um, his own role as a father, that person find it extremely difficult to cope. You do mention that, um, that those kind of people they really need it. But with our society, it's like some people you don't say it out. Is that also part of? I mean, part of the uh, crisis. I would say I it's, um, it's normal that we can have stigmatization. stigmatization that people feel they are ashamed to say, okay, I need help, which is fine for a man. It is because a man will not come out and need something. But I think it's just part of the community to know. I mean, there are signs and symptoms that you know that these people need help. For us, if, if we want to be honest within ourselves, we should, I mean, we know people that need help. And we know people that are closer. The best people to answer this maybe the imams or the nationals or the leaders of the faith community is to know that these people because the man is the manager, just like manager of the hospital or the director of the place. If they don't have enough resources, they can't perform. There's no way a man can perform if he doesn't have enough resources. And there's no way a woman will be happy in the home if the man is not there to support. And there's no way a man that is being supported by a woman doesn't feel happy. So the, the way the community has to look at it. You have to put confidentiality in place. What I mean by confidentiality is that if a man, we know that this person has a problem, I don't have to tell you. To support another, this man, I don't have to tell you. For you, anybody to support, you don't have to tell anybody. Maybe everything should go through your mom, I will know that there's confidentiality in place, and this particular person needs help, I will do that. So that when they come to the mocks or they come to the community in the nest, nobody will look at them and say, oh, this person doesn't have money, this person doesn't have food. I was the one that gave him money yesterday. I was the one that gave back. And, people, and the community, we don't like it. We don't want to be looked down upon. Everybody wants to have a great self esteem. So, to support the self esteem and to support them as well, we have to know that whatever we give, even sooner, the sooner, the sooner says, whatever you give with the right hand, you don't allow the left hand to know. So, one of the things I would have to do as much as say, look at this broken room. You know, a man that needs help, that needs a job, that needs this, that needs clothing. And you can see the wife, you can see the children. You know, that's a problem somewhere. somewhere. So, just extend that hand to, I mean, to support. So, that is 
the way I looked at it. If we put it in place in a community and put confidentiality in place, that nobody knows that this wedding is begging for food or doesn't have enough, then we should be able to help little people. And once we can do something of this little, 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 little around the place, we should be able to um, solve some issues. And may Allah make it easy for all of us. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my next question is going to go into this area whereby many people had complained and in some area, in some residential areas, you we one had seen it or perhaps something that is very common, like for a woman to call the police for her husband. And like in Africa whereby men could exercise their authority at home. Like, for instance, discipline their children, or perhaps even if they're kind of a, I, I'm not, I can't use the word control, or be in charge, be in control that, okay, she can tell the wife not to go to party, where are you going to, no, don't go. Over here, except some few women, who strongly believe that, okay, this is my matrimonial home, whatever my husband says, come first. Then many women, they themselves, it has become something, it, it has become, I mean, general known that, okay, some women deliberately, they want to live alone on their own and be in control of their own children. I could remember there was a particular day I had a woman who we were advising and she said it, as she said, she doesn't want to husband. Only what she was that she needs children and she knows how to get her children. Oh, sure. So what are the measures that can be put in place? to check this or perhaps to stop this from um, I mean, how is we like Mr. Tan or James We we are not uh, we, we we are not we would say for domestic bonds we can support that. For, for whatever reason it is not allowed. It's an abuse for a man to raise his hand before. And at the same time it is not allowed. A woman to raise her hand for a man. They are not accepted at all. For child abuse, at the same time, I mean, discipline your child the way you want. There's regulations that is against it. I mean, coming back, as I said earlier, to the principle of Islam, the issues of anger start most of these things. And at the same time, we still have to go back to the woman and the son. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that if you are angry, you should stand up for wherever you are and change your positions. If you are still angry, you should do your do. And if you are still angry, you should keep quiet. And there's a narration that's a while ago, a while of narration that said, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to the Prophet, advise me. And the Prophet said, do not get angry. He came back again and said to the Prophet, advise me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not get angry. He came back to the third time and said, advise me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not get angry. And we know that most of these things come from anger. The beginning of anger is not right, the end of it doesn't matter. So if we can eat this, if, if we can get something in place to look into, before it goes into that, that area of party, of anger, that people will start saying, okay, I don't want to man anymore, I don't want you anymore, and there's going to be broken. The woman, no woman wants to be alone. It's the fear of the unknown. And what is bringing the fear? Because there's the experience of things that are happening in the past in people in the end. So we are not saying, I am perfect, you are perfect. We're saying, the community, we have to work together to bring a home, a perfect home in the community, to have a good community. A good community. So the women that have it in the mind that, oh, okay, I am, I don't want to get married. We have to say, the Prophet said, marriage is a sunnah, and 
if you, if you are married, you have completed half to it. We have to put them in a situation where we are bringing them back to Islam and using the word of Quran and Adit to support them. Because before you can make an action, uh, before you see, for every reaction you see, there's a reaction that has happened. If anybody has seen the word, something has happened before. So I would say we still have to go back to a continuous uh, lectures, continuous program, continuous mercy to support families, support people, let them realize that okay, it's like to calm people down, to give people solutions to issues, solutions to problems. Because the Quran is similar to Bakura, Allah to me. Zari can it be tabu la rai but we go to the moon for free. So this we can this book, there's no controversy over it. It is full, it is complete. It's just for us to follow it and seek the guidance from it. So it's not left for us, ourselves, to be our brother's keeper in everything we do. The wife, we know that this couple, we see them together, we don't see them together. What's happening? So we do, those, we do that so many times, but it's not enough. So if everybody can do that with you wherever they are, I think we'll be able to achieve things together. So we are now support to us. Support our families, support our husbands, our wives, our elders. Uh, may he help us to bring the unity back into family lives as we have had in the old days and our own families. I want us to look at you know, between the protection of marriage, protection, I'm talking about the union. Who is responsible among the couple? Who is responsible for the protection that, okay? For instance, this union, inshallah, no matter whatever the situation will be, you know, like two people now, we are not the same. Perhaps the woman or the man. Is there any way to explain, in fact, I mean, for the benefit of our viewers at home, both men and women, for them to learn and to know who is responsible according for protection of that union? According to the Quran, Surah Tunisai, verse 34, men are the protectors. It's the responsibility of the man to protect his own home. And, and the Quran explained to us, he said, because they spend out of their prophecies to take care of their home, and because as a whole, they, they excel, I mean, they are, they, are, they, are, they, they are an atom above the world. As I would like to put it, I can The man is a degree. The degree out of the world. So the protector of that house lies with the man. That's why I continue to say, to support him or own, you have to support the man in the house. So once the man is supported, there's just little you need to do. And the man is with a little bit of harm. So we have, when we look at what is happening, and we see that, the room is, uh, for example, you said the women we call police, and send the house, let's find out of the house. And you live here, you first. <laughs> we've heard and we've seen the reason why a woman would pick a fool and say, This is the man that I have my children for, and you should leave the house. It's because you feel the man, there's something wrong to you. And that's the reason why we have to find. And it's a fact that the man, that man, needs support from someone. Because when we say woman, so Sula Salazar said, woman is created from the weak. We're not complete. I used to say sometimes um, when, they come, when we, most of our programs are running late, and I say to God, let's come. We, we have so many things to do. We're not complete. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but all my names, I forget things. There's so many things. He said, I'll give you a list. You have not finished it. I don't finish the list. And there's so many things I can't do. So we just women. We just women. And we can only do what women can do. But it's come, it becomes frustrated to some women if they don't if they don't feel that they've been supported. And if a man cannot support, what can he do? He can't do it. If he doesn't have a job. I've seen a situation whereby the man doesn't have, the woman knows that the man doesn't have, but she just continues to leave. 
in that situation, you have to just find a way of supporting her. Because she can't understand why her husband doesn't have it. In fact, she believes her husband half and is hiding it. I, I know this man doesn't have a job. The man would say to me, I don't have it. I've, got, I've worked with so many couples. But what we're saying, at the end of the day, is a half life. For, a, for we to be able to support a family, we are not blaming the man. We are not blaming the woman. We want them to come together. We don't want any house to be broken anymore. We want people to be fine. We want the husband to listen to the wife. We want the wife to listen to the husband. And whatever the issue is, we want it to be supported. And the Quran went far for further, saying that if everybody has tried, the community, the imam, and everybody has tried to help husband and wife, and it's not working, so then call the nearest relatives to talk to each party in the world. Then if it doesn't work, then the last resort to keep it marriage, the happy home, is to call each other. That's one of the eight full things. But as much as possible, you have to just continue to support, which is very, very important. The other thing is very So, I've been looking at this, uh, this aspect of uh, the main topic now, and we've discussed about the solution, like cancelling, like supporting. Why by situation? Why by because I think it's, it's common. We've seen it. Some of us who are close to a committee, we are by counseling. We are by them calling a woman and you discover that this woman is Muslim and she will refuse to come. And we go back to Inga. Inga so before we call, I was saying we go back to the Quran and Adit. And we have to, one thing we are not using Muslims, we are not efficiently using our Imams and our missionaries. Okay. They are scholars, mm -hmm. and they know so many ways of making things happen. Before we call a woman to meet, maybe you said the imam wants to see her. He will answer the imam. Because once you say, well, you've talked to before, I confidentiality. Mm -hmm. you, you have said it, so you have decided, I'm not coming. Maybe you that are coming, you have the same problem. So I'm not, you can't even talk to me. So, so people have that things. Now, who is she that is talking to me? She has had another problem herself. So it's about bringing the scholars, the imams, and nations into these issues and letting them come in. And regular, with regular reminders Quran and Hadith, lectures, tafsir, Quran, lectures, tafsir, about relationship management. It's a very, very important relationship management because what the husband is saying, the wife might not be saying this. And Shaitan has promised us that we continue to coming between the son of Adam and Eve to divide us. Okay? And one thing that is why we should think about is, as Muslim, we will continue to be tested. Yeah. Is either everybody, even me, you, my brother, and when we start sitting down, is either you are being tested at the moment, or you are about to be tested, or you've just been tested. For every circumstances you find yourself, Allah is testing you on a particular level. So when we look at couples, we look at them as okay, maybe there's an issue, let's see how we can support the work of Allah with this couple. So it's, it's a roundabout thing, it's a clockwise, it never, it never ends. So we have marriage conference once a year from one UK, just once a year. And we know that so many questions come at the end of the year, and we talk to the we will not be able to answer so many questions, because we don't have to say. So our proposal now is to communities. That every as a last week, every group should have a marriage counselor, a marriage event where we could, people have to listen. Even the children, the parents have to know the rules of Surah al Bukman to pass on to their children. Every husband, every wife should know the rules of Surah al Bukman to pass to their children. So all those things have to be included upon the parents for us to be one of there's this mutual plan between husband and wife on how do we raise our children, how do we do this, how do we do that. They come closer. The poverty will go away. When a man and husband are close, when the wife and the husband and wife are close, they don't see poverty. The only time there's poverty and there's issues is when they are apart and people are coming in between them. So the first thing we have to, the light we have to put more is the word, the word of Tawar Hamutan. That love has to come. 
that remember the remembrance of Allah every minute, every second has to come back. And you have to continue to bring the book together. If Osman is saying this, why is saying this? You continue to bring them together for the words of Allah. And that's one thing that can bring peace and unity. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I have a best relationship. But I'm saying the word of Allah can make this perfect. We are let make all of our fans, all of our affairs, easy for us in everything we do. And I thank you very much indeed for this uh, You've actually addressed it uh, perfectly as one would uh, expected. But now I want you to address women, like giving them advice, because this program is very popular among women. Most of our viewers, some of the feedback we get, a lot of people are sending messages out. What advice do you have for them generally regarding this issue? Talk to them directly. I'm not bringing any questions. Just talk to me. Who are? Who? Um, I think one thing that I normally say is everything will come to pass. Yeah. And the day will always come to our end. Mm. So we should always remember why we started. And believe that Allah is going to help us at every point in time. So we should increase in our worship. And to me, whatever I say is the advice is to me too that we should ensure that we do our regular prayers all the time. And after every every prayers, we do do our to Allah to continue to unify our families and make all of our fears easy for us. And we should work together with our husbands, our couples, and our children to pray the within the house. And in the morning, after every salat, or once in a while, we should talk, make a topic. We did the husband, maybe the husband do a topic today, the wife do a topic tomorrow. The husband might not be out the time to plan it, but the wife should always put it in place. You may forget today, you do it tomorrow. So it's pray, praying together in the house, very, very important. Then train, train the children together. The wife should always bring the children to the husband. She should not try to make the children feel that she's she is the one that is better. She should always bring the children under her husband. For every issue, let them go to the father. If Allah makes the woman to be more, maybe, wealthier than the husband, she should always direct the children to the father and support her own husband the way she has to support her husband. It's two way things. Your husband is the person you like and the person you fall in love with and the person you marry. So if he's not able to put money down, you support him for the money and he put it down. And if that's the issue with the family, the woman should be able to come out and say, when you're working with children, look to your father. Even if she knows that what is coming from the father to the children is from her, but she should always go back to the father. Because as we say, the Quran has made the man the head of the family. And if the manager is not performing, the keep her, he will not achieve anything within the city of the community. Then number another thing that we advise that we can advise ourselves as women is patient. May Allah give us patient. The um, the the my my mom will say the market, okay. The market that Allah has given to the women is is the number is big within the uh, within our household. So she learned to be patient with everything that happens and she left she learned to keep the and the company of the people that follow Allah, the company of people that wish Allah, and the company of people that knows when things are wrong and when to call people to go down. And the last thing I need to say is that the woman and her husband should support the community together. They should work together. They should talk together. I know a friend of mine that says to me, he used to have a problem that have issues. And other said, I'm not going to talk to her. I will tell the sister. If he's not talking to him, so you, you talk to her. Someone has to take it up. I'm not saying it's everything in the sisters, uh, with the woman, but I would say it's the woman that can pray with the better woman. The woman has the power to be patient. And the woman can use, they can use the ikma they have to spend five pounds and the woman think that if they're spending five so I will say with my statement that we understand what we are going through and we know what we go through and we know what we see and we don't talk about and we know what we see and we continue to cover. 
But at the same time, we pray that Allah reward all of us as women. We pray Allah reward us with our patience. We pray Allah bless our children. We pray that anybody that is thinking about our relationship now and she's sad, may Allah make all of us happy. Allah. And we pray that whatever is happening that is not making it to together and is not bringing that, that happiness to the couple, may Allah give, give us the mercy for it to be easier for every, now, every one of us. And I will say to my viewers that um, I'm the youngest here, and most of the things I'm saying is what I've learned from our scholars. I'm not a perfect wife, I wouldn't say that, and I'm not, and I'm not a perfect woman. I'm just saying that if we come together as sisters, as mothers, as daughters, as I have to most of you, we'll be able to achieve the best for our children, our futures, our fathers, our husbands, and our brothers. We all make all of our affairs easy for us. Oh, viewers, thank you very much, Alaja. We sincerely appreciate your time. We know that part of your extremely tight schedule, we were able to consult people here and there, and uh, you know, we were able to get you. We sincerely appreciate your coming. This is where we are going to draw the curtain of this program this week. On behalf of everybody in the studio, we would like to thank um, Dr. Mohammed Akinwomi Utman and um, all the entire staff of um, Zunurin, Aj, and Umura, our sponsors. We sincerely appreciate you. Until next week, when we bring another edition of your popular program, Guest Podium, I am Ibrahim Siak Dawood. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.